Hello everyone, Nadim here with PC Solutions Net. So today we are going to talk about OneNote. I know a lot of people have asked me about uh, what, what tool do we use internally for brainstorming and things like that. Uh, not, not really our entire team. I know some of the people here, they don't use OneNote, they use other applications, but Specifically, I've been using OneNote for many years now, and I use it on all my devices. Uh, ever since Microsoft 365 came out, uh, or before that, uh, it used to be called BPOS, OneNote really became my uh, main application that I used to take notes, to brainstorm, to share, and it could be by department, by role, whatever have you. OneNote also works really well for schools uh, because teachers can create a OneNote per class and then share it with everybody. And then you can have sections, you can have pages in each section, and it, it all works well. And the best part about OneNote is that it is unlimited canvas. So you can zoom in, zoom out, there's no limit. Uh, you can write text, you can draw, you can do handwriting. You can even record audio. So I know a lot of people who go to school, they will take notes and they will be recording the audio as the teacher is uh, speaking in, in a lecture. And uh, OneNote is really good where it will synchronize the audio with what you're typing. So that way it will, you know, when you play it, it will show you the cursor, where you were, what you typed as it plays that audio. So that sync is, is really good. If you draw something or if you handwrite something using Microsoft Pen, OneNote by default will OCR everything. What that means is that things are very easy to search for. So whether it's a handwritten page or whether it's typed in page, you can search across the board for, for everything. Here is my OneNote. And, and this OneNote is not shared with anybody else. This is just my OneNote. Uh, you see my notebook on the left-hand side. I have different sections. Of course, I have multiple pages in this uh, section here. So now, w one thing that for you, it might look a little different, these pages are up on top. So what you can do is you can change where you can have vertical tabs. This is a default behavior. You see the tabs on the left, or you can change it to horizontal tabs. So you see the tabs up at the top. So you can, you can choose uh, which way you want. So right now, uh, under my quick notes, I have multiple pages here. So you can go down and, and as you can see on, on on the right side in the main area over here, you can zoom out there. Basically, there is no limit to the canvas. You can zoom in. It's a freehand note taking application. Now, you can drag stuff into it. Like, uh, for example, you can put URLs, you can take images of your websites, you can dump them in here, you can take notes on there. And if all else fails, you can print to OneNote. So if you have Windows or Mac, you'll have a OneNote printer. If you print to it, that printout will come into OneNote. So it works really well. Of course, you know, color coding, you can color code different uh, areas. So over here, you have all these different options here. So this is how it works. One of the one of the ways that I, I know a lot of companies use OneNote is they will have a notebook per, for example, per department. So uh, like, you know, at, at PCSN, we have our, uh, for example, our infrastructure de department. So we might have a OneNote for infrastructure. We might have a OneNote for accounting. And then we might have a OneNote for sales slash marketing. And then in each one of these notebooks, these might be shared department wide so everybody in that department might have access to these and then under each one of these notebooks we will have different sections pages and and different areas just like this and and there's no limit we can have as as much as we want that's what really brings that entire team together now you don't have to rely just on text like i said earlier you can 
you can switch over here to draw mode and you can draw stuff uh, by hand. Uh, of course, you can switch it to full page and it'll give you hints as you, as you uh, uh, go along. So uh, now an example of drawing might be like uh, if I create a new page and I'll just call it uh, test draw and then uh, in here now I can use the pencil and I can uh, just for example uh, write something in the page and I just write it by hand so you can actually fold the screen to where the keyboard folds back and then you can type something in there so for example this is a test right and since I am up here I wrote it by hand but see how it actually switched it and translated it into text so it did on the fly handwriting to text detection and it, and it put it up in there so so now let's uh, let's uh, click down here and I'm going to say something like uh, what is going on so now you'll notice how it on the fly it detected it now sometimes we may not want to do this right I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this guy right here and I'm going to choose something else so like right here I'm gonna choose this pen so you'll notice how this one this pen is a text pen which automatically converts handwriting to text this one is just a pen it's a one, well, one mm pen so now if i write something here it's not going to convert it it's just going to keep it as it is so this is a good test now i wrote this is going to keep it like this let's say we selected this now, once you select this text, we can convert it. We can do ink to text conversion. If you are brainstorming, so this is how that will work. So you have, let's say you have a pen and you drew a box. Now you can tell it to convert, detect the shape that you're drawing and then convert it to the actual shape so that uh, the the, the dimensions will be accurate you can do your automatic shapes so for example like right now uh, let's say I have the pen selected and I have a rectangle so because I have automatic shapes selected up at the top right here if I, it was a circle it will convert it to a circle now if I don't want automatic shapes, uh, let's uncheck automatic shapes. Now if I draw a circle, it will stay how I drew it. So it's a, it's a pretty good application for brainstorming how you want to lay things out, how you want to do things. For example, if uh, here, if you wanted to have a different color uh, and you can do a you know different color, different thickness, and you wanted to draw like in red uh, uh, and this is a square and now let's say uh, now you come back let's say years from now and you type in square so you will notice how it highlighted square in here so it, it detects where you wrote square so now in, in my case I've I've to told it to search all notebooks but what I'm going to do is switch it to search on page and I'm going to go to my test and you'll notice how it's kind of back um, it's kind of highlighted so it so one note is detecting the text that I have handwritten using one note you can take pictures of things that you're hand drawing on on a uh, on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper, bring it into OneNote. You can write uh, freehand within OneNote itself. Everything that you do will be OCR'd and you'll be able to search it. So years from now when you go back and you search something, you can find it. Now, what was happening earlier, you, you noticed how I would type something in and it would find it in any of the notebooks. So that's a actually a pretty powerful feature so if I click this down arrow so right now I'm searching for a circle if I click the down arrow 
instead of this page, I can say this section. It will find that in that entire section. Or I can say this section group or all notebooks. If I say all notebooks, this is like the entire notebook. It will find the occurrence of that. So, and back to uh, find on this page. Now, one important thing that you want to think about is you can have sections embedded in sections. So if you right click, you can create a section group. So for example, on the left hand side, we have PCSN section group, and then we have all these sections under PCSN. And then we have a subgroup. So it's a group PCSN, subgroup PCSN employees. You can have multiple subgroups, as many as you want. So that really, that hierarchy makes it very powerful to, to use it uh, in, in multiple ways. And now there is uh, one question that I get asked is, well, can you share specific sections with other team members? So when you share something, uh, uh, and you can click on the share here. You want to. You can share the entire notebook, or you can email a copy of the notebook. So you cannot, for example, go in here and share just one section with somebody else. So you you have to share the notebook. So, but that works well if you have a notebook per department, and then you share it within that department. So that works well. Um, and of course, you, know, you can have loop components in your OneNote, embedded in your OneNotes as well, and uh, all that works. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an intro to OneNote, how you can use OneNote. Think of it a free form application where you can use it from brainstorming for anything you want. And the biggest thing is that as you create these OneNotes in your uh, OneDrive, whether it's OneDrive for Business or, or the personal OneDrive, Whatever capacity you are using for your notebooks in OneNote does not apply to your quota. So the free membership, you know, the free account in OneDrive Personal gives you five gig worth of data. If you create a, a bunch of OneNotes uh, that are more than five gigs, that those w will not apply towards your quota. So that's another thing that uh, Microsoft is kind of giving away uh, to you. So until next time, everybody, have a great day, and uh, hopefully this will make you productive. Uh, the best way to get started is get in there and start testing it out, start checking it out. And that, that's how I started, and now I've got like a gazillion different sections and pages and subsections and groups and all that kind of stuff. Have a good day, everybody.